Okay, welcome to my first fluke trip of 2019 off the kayak. And here you see me rigging up a five inch gulp jerk shad. Now this is not a bait that is talked about very often, but in the early season, when the water is still a little bit cold, I found this to be much more effective than the gulp mullet or the grub. Um, namely because it has sort of a dead action. Sometimes they don't want to see a curly tail flapping around in the current. They want something a little bit more subtle. So here we're fishing about 15 feet of water. I am casting up current. I'll leave a link on the upper right hand corner on how to use fairly light jigs in deeper water. But here I'm using a 3 16th ounce jig head and the key is always to cast up current and to train your eyes on what bottom looks like in your line when you're looking at it visually. Okay, so the first fluke, 2019, is a short. Um, it's pretty common to have a 10 to 1, 15 to 1 short to keeper ratio when you're fishing the back bays or rivers. Here you get sort of a better idea on how I'm jigging the jerk shad. The movement is, is pretty subtle. I'm basically hitting the jig with my rod tip and then immediately giving it slack. This bait has no built-in action so everything depends on your input on the rod end. I got it. So this fluke is hooked fairly deep and that's pretty common when you're using light jigs. I'm using the unhook them the hooker and I'll leave a link to that and everything I'm using down in the description below. So this ends up being my first keeper of 2019 and I do end up catching a limit this day but it was definitely a grind. I have to say that in general the fluking in North Jersey has fallen off a cliff in the past couple of years. Now if you pay attention, the vast majority of bites are coming on the drop. This is true of almost any bait you use, but especially the jerk shad. When you rig it on a light enough jig head, it does a very slow, sort of a death spiral back down to the bottom on slack line. It looks very natural and it triggers a lot of bites. So this little guy has line coming out from the middle of his body and I don't know how this happens. If any of you guys have an idea, let me know. Um, he's basically lassoed and the line is free. There's no hooks or hardware on it. So I cut it, 
Um, my camera dies shortly thereafter, but you see me pull the line out. I would imagine at some point there was a hook involved that rusted away, leaving just a line, but who knows. In any case, my camera dies there. I had about another eight or nine shorts until I decided to make a move. This is a smaller creek arm that has a lot of current flowing through it. And I'm basically on the pedals the whole time just to keep myself in place. Once again, I'm casting up current. Right to the left, there's sort of a deep cut that drops down to 12, 13 feet. And most of these fish are hanging right on that edge. So to quickly mention the setup I'm using, it's a 7 foot 1 Daiwa Kronos, medium light. This is my cousin's rod. He's nice enough to loan it to me. I don't have a medium light to medium power spinning rod in the rotation right now. Everything's a little bit too light. Um, I'm using 8 pound Daiwa J braid connected to 10 pound Seaguar STS Fluoro via the lazy alberto knot and i'll leave a link to that knot on the upper right hand corner now this next fish ends up being the biggest of the day and pretty classic fluke fight you'll see it coming easy and then flatten out i had no idea how big the fish was until we're pretty much vertical Now you guys saw how far I drifted just fighting that fluke for a minute and this is wind against tide today as well so pretty much flying and there's no way I'm getting that jig back um, she had to weigh down her gullet so this one ends up being 22 22 and a half inches so the normal progression of my fluke season is first I'm happy to catch keepers then I want limits even though limit is only three fish now. So not quite the accomplishment it was a few years ago. But mainly I'm looking for the biggest fluke. I'm always looking to break my PB. Now on this particular trip, not quite as hopeful to do that. But in subsequent trips, I'll be targeting larger fluke. If I go fluke fishing at all, I think my cousin has that pretty well handled. Not sure if you guys saw that, but this fluke hit my Kai tag on the way up. And I don't know, these, these fish that live in this strong current, they seem to be fighting harder.
Okay, so we had a tide change and the bite where we were completely died. So I came back to fish the structure I was on to start the day off. By this point, I am out of light jig heads. I am out of five inch jerk shads. So here I'm using a half ounce spro, five inch mullet, which is my standard rig for 99% of my fluking. And yeah, I definitely thought this was a bigger fish, just from the way she fought. Um, fluke are tricky. It, it all depends on how they present themselves, what angle their body takes against the current. So, in any case, here we're fishing a large sand flat to end the day. I'm looking for my third fish to complete the limit. And it actually happens here in about six feet of water, which is fairly surprising, but when you're fishing the rivers and the back bays, they can be very, very shallow. And right there you see me take just a half turn off my drag pressure. That's pretty important when you're fishing shallow. So if you do hook into a large fish and it's only four feet under the boat, you want a light drag setting. And you want a light drag setting with fluke the closer they come to the surface. Doran, I foul hooked one. Wow, this one might be a keeper. Don't even lie, you went for it. Okay, so barely over 18. Normally I wouldn't keep a fish like this, but I couldn't stay out there any longer. I really wanted the limit. I promise aunts, uncles, plenty of fish, and this is gonna have to do. So as usual, we bleed our fish out, just a small cut near the membrane under the gill plate. Once they're bled out, it takes about 5 to 10 minutes, transfer them to your cooler. Um, summertime, you definitely want them on ice. I do not recommend towing them around on a stringer all day. Okay, so that's the inaugural fluke trip for 2019. Thanks everyone for watching. There will be more shore fluking, kayak fluking videos, as well as catch and cooks. So, thanks for watching. I will catch you on the next one.